Okay, guys, welcome back to uh, Flying in Space with Planet Head. Um, got a couple of very small updates and things like that. Something, uh, but I wanted to start off. Uh, thanks so much for joining me here. I um, wanted to start off with something I tried to get myself started doing a while back. And then I got off track with it. And I want to do this, if I can remember, to every video that I bring up. And um, it's basically, <laughs> so if somebody pulls up a video um, for this, they'll get something out of it, hopefully, even if they turn it off after a minute. Um, so my goal is every time I do a video to um, do a hint or something I learned um, or something that might be helpful to people, whether it be super small or super big, um, but just spend a minute or two every time, give me, and I need to come up with a name for it, but um, I think this would be kind of cool. Um, and then I got some other stuff to give updates on, and I'll talk about my latest excursion out to uh, Venal. Uh, the last three episodes I did that, um, flying through there, and I made it. If you watch the other three videos, they got a little bit iffy there, probably a lot in my own head. Um, also, some updates um no i have not moved rooms i basically turned 90 degrees and i have fixed all my lighting problems so uh but first I, i'm getting off of it i want to get into the hint and the reason why i wanted to do it was um because now you guys are actually giving me some great feedback on things that i'm doing wrong when i'm playing or if i'm talking like i talk while i play uh you're dropping comments in there so i wanted to uh if I don't have something for each video, um, I've already got like five or six little things, but I want to point out if anybody gives me some good advice right off the bat, so we're going to get into that right here. Um, one of my good buddies, uh, little Vernie here, let me just see here, in one of the videos I just posted recently where I was flying out to Venal, um, I had not been out to Nullsec in quite a long time. And um, he just replied, he actually put up a couple on the last couple of videos, it was pretty cool. Um, but uh, I had asked something about, I had not been out to Nullsec since some of the changes to cloaking. I haven't started cloaking in over a year, I think, uh, maybe briefly back when I played my other characters. But uh, uh, with my new setup and the way I'm playing and the scavenger lifestyle, I have not used cloaking. Um, back whenever I used to play, um, when you cloaked up, you were cloaked up until somebody uncloaked you, and some so somebody could sit in a system. And there were all sorts of upgrades and things like that, <coughs> with changes that people had put forward. So while I was flying out there, I did notice I'd gotten a, a prototype cloak for the first time, and I noticed there was a timer on it. That's cool. I actually don't mind this. Um, it used to frustrate me. I remember whenever I lived in my small alliance out in Nullsec uh, five, ten years ago, uh, we got um, system camped by a uh, cloaker. I can't remember the exact wording you used for it. But basically, all of our miners, um, if they went out and started mining, they would be hot dropped on. And the, um, so uh, while there was a function that was used by other groups that was valid at the time, it was really frustrating. I found it stagnating. Um, it was too simple of a um, way to keep people from mining rather than just invading. You just force them not to do it. Um, that, that's my own personal choice. I, plus, at the time, I was a miner. Um, not a young miner, um, like young in age. I mean, like I was a miner. So it really hindered my gameplay. So probably that's why I was mad at it. But um, as I was flying out to Venal, I was looking at some of the things. I didn't get nearly as much time as I wanted to out in Null, uh, player-controlled Null sec to look around. Um, but I had asked about the stabilization, stabilization timer that's out there. And um, uh, little Ver Vernie actually replied here. He said the stabilization timer, stabilization timer just tells you how long you are immune to mobile observatories. Uh, they send a ping every 10 minutes system-wide, which uh, has a 40% chance of decloaking you. Uh, the timer will 
start again when uncloaking and cloaking again. Um, that's all that he had there. Oh, um, so uh, he's also asking, I'm going to be switching my work shifts. By the way, still positive for COVID. Ah! Uh, so I'm feeling a lot better, but still positive. Enough of that. If you've watched, you've known I, the past week I've been on COVID leave. It's driving me insane. And Folgers coffee sucks. Um, but uh, so uh, I this really intrigues me. Now, I haven't had enough time to read up on it. Um, and that's kind of an update that I want to give you as far as William. He did get out to Venal. Um, and then I actually found it. It's hysterical. I got to get to that later. And I found a wormhole back um, that literally uh, there was a wormhole to wormhole space. And then a second, the very first wormhole that I scanned out went four jumps away from where I had started from in um, Golfinodi, or I think it was Gelfhaven or Golfinodi, one of the two. Um, literally, uh, I was able to get back to there. Um, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time in NPC Nullsec out in Venal, um, or in player-controlled Nullsec. You're just asking to die if you do that, unless you're part of them. Um, but it is something that I want to read up on. So if you're ever out there, and this is kind of cool, because I had back in the day, I remember whenever they were cloak, cloaky camping, that's what it's called, or that's what it was called. They would literally sit a guy in your system that you mined out of, cloaked up, and he would just randomly look to see if any mining ships were out there over the course of the day went through. If he saw a large mining fleet was out there, he would get his fleet, he would contact his guys and they would hot drop that area. So you basically couldn't mine all day. My kind of thought at the time was I had different ideas that I thought, well, this would be kind of cool if they implemented. And I thought, um, you know me, I, I like my active gameplay. Um, and uh, I always love that sound, skill training completed. Um, <coughs> but I had thought of maybe doing something like depth charges or something like that, where it wouldn't blow up a ship, but um, if you could create a ship or a piece of equipment that the ship could fly out and send out um, depth charges that would decloak ships that were out there. Um, but I'm sure that would take a huge amount of programming. From what I can tell from what he's telling me here is that there's mobile observatories. And if you want to look it up, you can. I'm going to after I get done with this video. Um, but thank you so much for this. And uh, so this is a longer hint or explanation. But if, it get, if you already knew this, cool. If you didn't, it gets you to think about it. Um, that's cool too. Um, it's just a cool update since I used to play, and I thought that was awesome. Um, the other thing you may notice is I uh, there's a couple different updates here. My screen is a little bit cleaner um, just because I moved. I still have my two monitors, but I moved over to my laptop, which has a better high res resolution. My larger monitor is super old. I still need to update my computer. Um, but... Um, so this is kind of cool. I can get more things on my screen, be able to do some other things. Um, so that I'm happy about. Um, the other part, too, is uh, if you can see behind me. Uh, well, obviously, I've got... This is kind of cool. I feel like I'm part of the real world instead of some light coming through a window or uh, literally this just shifting my desk 90 degrees... Uh, I feel like uh, a lighting specialist um, in uh, Hollywood or something. I don't know. Um, but as you can tell behind me, I got uh, Ron Swanson's uh, Pyramid of Excellence. Um, uh, you can't see him over there, but the, my uh, my cat from that I had for 19 years and my father's dog, and I'm going to be adding in a thing for my father's dog over there. But back here is slowly my collection of coffee mugs. I need to organize this better from trips that I go on. So if you're ever wondering. And up top is a model uh, that I need to build of the USS Yorktown. So you, if you want to keep an eye out, this, this shelf back here may change over time. 
Um, I just got things moved around, so I'm going to start organizing a few things. Uh, Eve Wise. So um, I did recently upgrade my uh, scavenge scavenger um, omen here. Um, I am now up to. Da, 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 da. Come on. Oh, I should I should minimize that there. I minimize that. Uh, long story short, I am up to almost 280 DPS. Now, some of you guys are probably laughing at that, but I've been able to get my fourth modulated energy beam gun. Um, I also just went through and systematically, and I'm not going to pull it up, it takes too long to pull up your skill things, but I systematically went through all of my skills and any skills that increase my um, uh, damage production or uh, tracking or anything revolving around the guns or the dr drones that I have for this ship. Um, I went ahead and threw those in that took less than two days. So there should be an upgrade to this. I'd like to get this over 300 with maybe a goal of 350 DPS. Um, but uh, got my omen rolling here, ready to go. A uh, buddy of mine dropped off um, out here uh, a capacitor rig with some um, uh, uh, some salvage goods. That's what I'm looking for. I haven't built it yet because I haven't had a need yet for it to increase my capacitor recharge rate with what I'm killing out here. Um, I may start looking into that if I go to Battle Cruiser, which may be in a couple weeks. Um, but I'm still having fun with the Omen. Uh, I got a couple other ships that I want to try out, um, and I still want to get this last little one here. All of this is salvaged goods. I mean, scavenged goods. Um, nothing here have I built, if I'm not mistaken, other than the ship hull itself. Down the road, I would really like to move on to the next level. Um, if I can find a wormhole to high sec and maybe pick up a few upgraded modules, build a second omen and have that as my hot rod omen ship that I only fly to blow things up with, like NPCs. This one that I would graduate into my PvP guy. Um, but that'll be a little bit. Um, so... Uh, any other updates? Oh, uh, big shout out. It's been a couple weeks. I brought this up a little while ago. Um, let's see here. Uh, Talking in Stations did come back with a vengeance today. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to them. Um, it's changed names and people who run it or whatever. I, um, I got a good breakdown from a guy the other day or about a couple weeks ago about what's happened with them. But I have to say, I'm so happy they, down, they dropped three videos today on YouTube. If you want to go check them out, I'm a subscriber. Um, they are what, when I first came back to EVE, what got me into really playing day after day after day. They, they had a daily, it's one of the reasons why I try to do a daily or an every other day uh, video. Um, because they were so good at, this was during the pandemic, whenever I, all I did was work, eat, and play play Eve or play video games because I couldn't leave my house. Um, I live by myself. My dog was here. We hung out a lot. Um, but talking in stations really helped me, made me feel like a part of a community, even just by listening to them. I, I commented once or twice on their videos, but they did a great job, especially during the big war that was going on. So um, if you want to check them out, they, I think they just dropped three videos. I am just starting on the first one. Um, let me see if I have it here. There it is. Okay. Yeah, they, um, so they, they had a couple videos. Um, they just dropped three of them. I barely started uh, the Summer of War one here. I started watching this one here too. The victory for wormholes. They're at the beginning of it. They were talking to um, one of the wormhole guys who made CSM. This one, um, they're at the beginning. I haven't watched them all. Uh, they're talking to uh, one of the uh, ladies who um, uh, does faction warfare and has also made CSM. 
and then a wormholer town hall so a ton of info here if you and they literally dropped them off like 14 hours ago so i'm just trying to catch up myself but i'm so glad to have them back i even dropped a note on their first one saying i'm glad to have them back i hope it's going uh to be an ongoing thing because it's something that i like to just throw on my second monitor while i'm playing and it keeps me going um, and they really inspired me and they do things a lot better than i do if i lose viewers to them that's cool uh because i don't really it is what it is um <laughs> but ooh, oh man this is so sweet um i know this is dumb but uh i just uploaded since i got done with some skills i now i'm actually seeing my skills propagate a little bit again um so rather than just keep talking let's go see if we can blow something up we got about 15 minutes in here so we got nobody in system let's just go see how much damage i can do I'm looking for at least one more modulated um ooh, actually there we go one more heavy modulated energy beam that will fill out my guns here i've got one a focal left and that'll be the end of my tier one meta for um guns and i also need one more meta uh, multispectral but all of these are scavenged items if you can believe it um, nothing has been built or bought um, other than the actual ship hole that I built um, cool okay cool we got some uh, so this is one of my favorite groupings to do um, number one we're gonna get our orbiting going on get our speed up let's get our targeting down let's get our drones out and oh this is in the way I don't need assets up why do I have my assets up huh <laughs> assets um, okay so we got those guys going there want to kill off the cruisers first Let's go ahead and get my armor repair going. I know my shields weren't done yet, but I want to get my armor repair going as soon as it gets into my armor. I don't want to take any chances of forgetting or misclicking. And I'm going to make sure I am orbiting make sure I was ordering the right one there <coughs> one is the loneliest um, but you know. main thing here is just killing off the cruisers so that I can basically dodge the bullets from the um, the battleships here and once I'm able to do that I don't have to worry about the capacitor that's the main reason why I'm not doing the uh, the rigs Ooh, I was not looking at my range here at a range of 29 that's not going to do any good with the multi-spectrals the x-rays I'm right on the edge there so I probably want to take this guy out if I can. Let my drones just maybe ping away at that guy there. And take care of this guy while he's still in range. I'm going to turn my armor repair off for just a second. It looks like that hellhound's almost back in range. I wouldn't mind finishing him off if I can. Because then I want to just time how long it takes me to take out this Sanchez tyrant. Okay, he's within range. Let's see if we can ping him off. Boom. Die. Ooh, my heavy afocals. There he goes. Okay, next. 
Let's run my go. Now the one thing too with the rig. Oh wait, whoops! I fired at the wrong guy. What am I doing? I need to fire at this guy here. Thank you. Um, okay. Now I'm, my capacitor is getting a little bit low. Uh, the kind of cool part, if I'm not mistaken, the rig that um, my one buddy gave me to actually throw on this if I want to, it doesn't seem like there were any drawbacks to it, if I'm not mistaken. i got to re-look at it. But that will definitely be something that I throw on to my hot rod. Um, when I say hot rod, it won't be the uh, super expensive, but it'll be the Tech 2 ship um, with rigs and stuff like that. Um, okay, so this is the Tyrant. He is actually the... This is the toughest regular battleship that you'll run into out here. It's going to end up being worth about 3.2 million isk once I kill him, not counting the uh, junk that'll drop. Um, we're at 119. Okay, we got through the shields. Now the question is, he is going to be armor tanked, like all these guys are, but the more DPS that I'm throwing at him, the... Uh, faster I can kill him, the less he can... Because um, once I get through the armor, his structure just bleeds. Now here's a second one. Now that I've got my speed up and going, I can turn off my afterburner to keep my capacitor going. I'll fire off my armor repair just one more time. It's down to 67. Sixty-three. So literally about a minute, and I've gotten through half of his armor. This is where, um, what am I at? I think I was at 280 DPS. Yeah, 279.7. So 280 DPS. If I can get this over 300 to 350, I can really do some damage to these guys. Now, whether or not I can do that with my salvaged goods or building the hot rod omen, um, I don't know. But here's a bigger kicker right here. So notice how my capacitor is starting to build back up. I don't really have to worry about that right now with the things that I'm doing with this ship. Now, it all depends on what you're, what you're using something for. But as soon as he's down to 18 armor, whoop, we got somebody in system. Okay, they always come right when I'm getting ready to kill something, don't they? Let's see who this fellow is. Been around a long time. I am going to align to my safe spot. Don't mind killing off. All I'm doing is aligning to the safe spot. That way, if I see him show up on my D scan, I just want to get this last kill. I'm being greedy. And. There we go. I actually was out earlier, um, and the reason why I'm being a little bit careful is a guy tried to combat probe scan me down. I had a little bit of fun dancing between safe spots. Um, I'm not sure where uh, Walter Schellenberger is here. Um, let's pull up my five bones channel if you guys want to join us we're actually getting a few more people into the five bones channel um so that's cool d scanning uh, 
So, um, big thing here is notice I am far away from the station. Um, so what I can do is go to my station safe, which will put me 0.5 away from the stations. I've talked about this in the past. All you, if you're going to be living in a system for a while, you want to um, set up your save points, move them around every so often. This one is particular that it's near the stations that I can go there and check to see if there's anybody sitting at the stations or if anybody's put up a warp bubble, anything like that. Okay, so we got Nestero here. Not too worried about Nestero as far as uh, putting up bubbles or things. Is there a reason why that is weird? Well, there are two cosmic signatures here. I think one of them, no, they're both new. So I'll go ahead and dock her up here. Because what I'm noticing here is there are no um, warp bubbles within this 0.5 area here. So I feel comfortable that I can go ahead and dock up. But looks like I'm able to take out the tyrant now um, within about three minutes now that'll get even better and better um and <clears throat> down the road oh he's gone i don't want to dock now stop my ship no i want to go check to see <laughs> let's go see um <coughs> what was in the tyrant stuff Sorry, I was about to end that there, but he left system. It's interesting, too, to try to think of what other people are thinking about you in a system. Like, I saw the Astero. There he is there. Um, he's gone now. So, a lot of people just use Asteros to explore. Other people use them to kill explorers. Um, other people use them as scouts. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think you can use an Estero as a, um, uh, as a, uh, alpha character. The only thing is you can't, you can't use a cloak. So that's a pretty expensive ship to be flying around when you can't cloak up if you're using it for exploration. Me, you know me, I like my cheap ships. Not saying I won't fly expensive ones, but um, when I'm doing something as dangerous as that. So all I'm doing here is I am going after this Dreadlord. While I go see, ooh, this one's, he's not that easy either. Yeah, I'm going to see what is in the um, Tyrant's wreckage here. So he's still within range, so I'm good there. Oh, I've got both of those on. That was stupid of me. I don't need either one of them on. Still within range. Now the cool part is, this is my favorite grouping because I get the battleship loot, which is worth a lot of material that I can melt down to make more ships. But then the cruisers that I killed off, um, they might have parts that I can throw onto my ship. Ooh, three million worth of loot. Nice. And that is one of the big things about um, this doing it this way. Uh, when I used to play, um, I better not go straight at him there. Um, and I used to run sites, combat anomalies out in Nolsec. Um, not every ship drops something. Whereas when you're running the um, asteroid belts, asteroid belt rats do a hundred percent drop every single one of them will drop something 
So if you're trying, that's why I like doing my um, scavenger lifestyle through the asteroid belts. Boy, this guy, I am taking him down quick. Nice. This is a lot better. So I would, I would say my old original basic, basic, basic no skill setup with my ship, my Omen. Oh, actually, I still have the, uh, I took a snip of it. Did not want that to come up on my main screen. There we go. Because I need to make sure people aren't in local after me. So my original, go away. Can't really see it here too well. My original Omen had a 208 DPS that was with just throwing everything on and just basic Amar skills. Let's see what's in this Dreadlord. Um, so I've been able to increase my DPS by um, 80 damage per second, which it sounds weird, but if you think about it, okay, so another 1.8 million. Let's see what's in these fiends and these hell the fiends and these hellhounds. Ooh, that's the other part too. I did um, recently, if I think I said this, launch. I got a salvager blueprint. And so while I'm driving around picking this stuff up, why do I have my armor repairer on? Why don't you guys tell me? I've had my armor repairer on. So this is where I'm not so worried about my cap right now. Because I'm forgetting and leaving things on. Um, but if you notice, uh, I've got a salvager blueprint and built three salvagers. And now they're just going around and doing their stuff. And while I'm going around and picking up stuff. There we go. We got here. Ooh, cool. We got a medium drone. I'm working on that. I do want to try those that out too. Um, one thing I did throw in was medium uh, drone usage. I don't have that yet. Um, and I want to see what the balance is. Since there's uh, 40... M3 space or that you can use for your drones for a um, omen you can either go five um, five light combat drones and three salvage drones or you can go four medium drones or you could go three uh, light drones I'm sorry three medium drones and two light drones and I want to see what does what. This That's another option. Something to get better at. So, um, But I love the fact that, and I've always loved this. I used to use them back in the day. Salvage drones just get do, do their job. There are little tricks you can do if you're, is that a heavy anode? Nope, not looking for the modulated. But close enough, I'll take it. I'll take anything. Um, but yeah. Uh, there are ways to speed up your salvage drones. You can actually assign each drone to a specific piece of salvage down the road. I, when I used to rat um, system combat anomalies back five, ten years ago, um, I used to use MTUs a lot because you were safe out there because you were part of the Alliance. Um, anything? Okay, it might be something. I, but I don't Oop, not enough space. That's fine. I think I got enough. So let's see here. My so taking out this one asteroid belt here, I was able to pick up six hundred six million worth of loot. Um, also, I killed off a one point seven and a one point eight million isk uh, battleship. So three point five plus. We're in a, um, the bounty risk modifier is 150, so 50% on top of that. So um, 3.5, 1.7, so we're talking about another 5.2 million, in, not counting the cruisers that I killed, 5.2, 5.3 million ISK in just bounties. That's pretty cool. I'll take that for just one asteroid belt. 
So other than that, um, that's all I got for this one. I'm just going to dock up here, drop my stuff off, and have some more fun. Um, thanks so much for watching. And uh, if you get a chance, check out Talking in Stations. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Feel free to contact me if you want in the Five Bones channel here or directly via mail or comment section. If you have some good ideas, I'll probably bring them right up and I'll just start saving them for one per video. I'm not going to do more than that because <laughs> that gives me content. Uh, you guys are going to help me with my content. And I have a couple, of, I have a list of a few small ones that little, little tricks that I've learned over the last couple months that have helped me to get better. Alrighty. Fly safe, fly dangerously, fly however that you want. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.